Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. Making your own rub-ons. Yes, we can buy rub-ons. Yes, we've been able to buy rub-ons for so long, it's not funny. But sometimes we can't get just what we're after. And you all know me, I use book pages. I use book pages so many times. I love the script, I love the different fonts, I love the writing, the different languages. And I can't always find those in rub-ons that I can keep using. So, and I'm sure this has been done before. I'm sure it's been out there forever. But I was playing last night and needed something to finish off a journal. And here's my rub-on. Can you see that? So I wanted this faded in rub-on, like you get with the 49 and market ones at the moment. So I've got packs of these. So they give you this faded in look. But, and I love these, but then when it's gone, it's gone. And I'm gonna to have to go out and buy more. So I was sitting here playing last night and playing with my sticky tape, scotch tape, cello tape, depending on where you're from, and needed an interior for this frame that was on this journal. And it worked. So I've played around a bit this morning and got lots on the go. Now this works a treat. You do need a little bit of patience with it though. And not all books work. I've worked that out this morning. So what I want to show you is I've got some sitting here. When I take them off, this is the end that I get. So, and I love this finish. So not only is it giving me my rub on, it's given me a book page with a little bit of difference that I will use again as well. So first things first, what you'll need is a book. Now, um, play with your books. As I said before, not all books work. And I will show you some books that I've got here that didn't work. The, and I would like to say it's the older ones that work, the newer ones don't, not necessarily. Some of them have got coatings on them and the print will not come off. So I've gone through five different music books and you know, that's not got a coating on it, but it does not work. This one works a treat. Now, the year for this one, could be anything, so I don't know. It's just one of the ones that I've picked up at a book fair somewhere. This one works. This is an old book that I've picked up, gosh, only knows where, um, in that old cotton um, paper, you know, the really thick paper. That works. So I can't tell you why some work and why some don't. So here's a music book that I've got that I thought, yep, this is not coated at all, and it doesn't work. I'm going to show you shortly when it doesn't work. First things first, bit of sticky tape. Okay, now we're going to do some big ones. We're going to do some small ones. So I just use standard sticky tape to start with. What I like to do is fold over an edge, which will make it easier to get off later on. Sit it on your book, push it down. I use my bone folder and just... Make sure it's on nice and tight. And then we're just going to peel it off. All right. So now it's on my sticky tape, cello tape, scotch tape. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to now pop this onto something. So I'll just grab another piece of uh, coffee dyed paper. So we're not actually making anything with this one today. And all you're gonna use is your glue stick. And this is where you need your patience because you need to make sure that that glue stick is completely dry. So just pop a little bit of glue stick down. Sitting it down. Again, use your bone folder or your credit card, one of those ones to press things down. I find my bone folder's got mm, no giving it so it'll work and it's what i use when i'm actually putting rub-ons on and you need to leave that to dry it has to dry dry completely if it's not dried completely it's not gonna work simple as that so we're gonna set that aside to dry now 
I've got some here that have been drying. Um, this one I want a real grungy shape. So it's going to be a cluster, but I want lots of grungy shapes. So I've popped some on already, torn back some pieces. This is this one that we've just done. Now he should be dry. Look at that. So I like this look. It's just, it means I can collage my papers without actually having the bulk of collaging my papers or tearing off papers and working out where I want to go because I can just layer over without worrying about it. This piece is this. Now this is a stamp that I've stamped onto some packing material and I thought, let's give it a shot. So that should be dry by now, let's hope. Now that, not quite as good as the book page, but that has given, and it's not sticky. It's not sticky at all. So that was a stamped image as well. So use your stamps, get your bits going. Um, as I said before, I'd show you, I'm looking for it. Here it is on my glue book. Now I wanted to, in here, look at this. Wouldn't he make a wonderful rub on? And I thought, yep, I like that. Wasn't that coated, this paper? And I thought, I'll give that a shot. So I've put on my larger packing tape. But watch. And it's been pushed down. Nothing. He is not coming off at all. That is just peeling straight off with a little bit of strength. And what it also does, oh, gotcha. Nothing on that, nothing at all. And it's made it sticky and dirty now because my hands are filthy. Can you hear the stick? So, and I'm gonna have to tear that out and using that as a glue page because um, otherwise it'll stick to it together. It is my glue book, but still. It's it's trial and error, it really is. Um, this one, she should be dry by now, was out of this. And this is this rag paper or cotton paper, you know the really thick paper of the older kids books? There she was. Okay, so I've peeled her off, popped her onto some uh, coffee dyed paper, so it's just normal copy paper which is what a lot of my signatures are made out of. So let's have a go and see if she's dry now. Oh, look. Look at that. There is a little bit left on there. She's a little bit sticky, but she's on there. So let's have a look at the... Now, this is just a... Xyron is the brand glue remover. So you just rub it over. And what it does is it picks up the glue. So let's see if that'll take that off without taking off the image. As I said, this is all just trial and error. And I was playing last night because I wanted something in that frame for that journal to finish off that journal. Because that's about finished now. I've got a few tags to go and then it'll be off to market so that is actually coming off but it's not taking the image off so I'd say that's a work tick that wins and I can I'm gonna rub that as hard as I can now and have a look it's just rubbing that glue surface from that and that might be my packing tape because I found it's the packing tape that leaves the most glue residue whereas the normal thin sellotape scotch tape sticky tape blah 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 um does not leave any residue so it could just be my packing tape and the brand of it and i've got lots of other ones i think down at work i've got a different brand so i might even try bring one of those home from work and try that but that's coming off a bit messy. Yes, I can see that. But it's taking that glue 
off. So that's just a matter of working at that. But it has left the image on there. So one of the others that I tried, as I said, this will just be a quick one. I've got another journal that I'm working on, just one of my slimline journals. I have these in kits ready to go so that when I'm going for craft days, I just pick up a kit. I've got all my scrapbook paper in there, bits and bobs, stuff like that, and I can work on them at craft days without having to take my entire desk. So in here, right, again, I've used that package tape because I wanted the bigger one. And that's that music one that we just did a little while ago. And I'm hoping this is dried. Not quite. It's not quite dried, but I'll pull it off to get what we've after. So it's giving me that, but that's still a little bit wet with the glue. But I'm going gonna, gonna to glue that back down again. Let's have a look. As I said, a little bit of trial and error. I want a spot there. So I'm just gluing like so. And I'm going to put that bottom bit down there. Again, I'll push it down. I'll grab another bone folder because I can't find the other one. And we need to leave that to dry but as I said before I found that the smaller tape works best for me um, I went through so many different books so many different bits and pieces to work it out and I cannot give you a rhyme or reason why some books work and some books don't so here's this music note let's have a look nothing See what I mean? They just don't work. There are some papers that don't work. I've got, here we go, here's a digital. So let's have a look and see if the digital works. You know if it's going to work straight away. So fold over your end again, just so it makes it easier to grab the section. Now I can't, sorry, I can't remember. Oh, it could be Graphic Fairy, actually. So I can't remember whose digital it is. But all right, give it a push down. Let's have a look and see how my printer give it another push. All right. Not really. Not really. So let's Let's just play with a little bit here. Let's put a little glue on it first. It is all trial and error. So I've played a little bit, but there's so much more I could play with with this. I find where I've put that glue, about there. Oh, don't push down when you've got glue in there because it makes it all slippery. Push down with your fingers, all right? <laughs> Tip of the day. All right, we'll leave that to dry. It's fairly warm here today, but not wonderfully warm. So let's go back to this one and we'll find some nice writing. Nice and easy. We know this one works. I'm just a bush. Look, now I've got two bone folders there. And I think I've got another two in my drawer because I lose them. Look at that. See, you can tell straight away if it's going to work. So here's this one. Let's pop this one on this one. And I want a little bit up there now like that. So again, I'm just going to... And I can glue over where my other bits are. Now, this is just one of the die-cut pieces that I have in my cluster box ready to be done um, that are out of the old Kayser Craft pads. Or any die-cut shape if you want to cut them out from your die-cutting machine. Oh, speaking die-cutting machine. I'm trying to get everything done today, this morning. It's now this afternoon. I haven't done well, have I? I've um, got two loads of washing done. I've got a silver side on for tea. I've got the dishwasher done. The bed's made. Done all that because once I've got everything done, 
I can have a play. Yesterday, I treated myself and I went out and bought a Cricut Joy, one of the baby ones, just to fit on my desk. Um, used to have a Cricut many, many, many years ago when they first came out, in the big ones, big, 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 big ones. And in those days, they were the cartridges that went in and all the rest. And then when we moved to Geelong eight years ago, I sold it because I was using my Big Shot more than the Cricut and they were starting to go digital then. And I thought, eh, I probably won't. My technical skills were rather limited. They still are, but they're getting a little bit better. And I've given in and I've gone and bought a little Cricut Joy. So it's sitting behind me, screaming at me, Kylie, Kylie, play with me. And it's still in the box. I haven't even undone the box. I haven't even undone the little plastic bit on the box, the sticky tape on the box to have a look because I've got to get everything else done before I can. So it's just, yeah. Oh, so you might see bits and pieces like that come up soon. We'll see how we go. That's not dry. I wonder if we can dry this with the heat gun. I haven't dried glue stick with a heat gun before. So let's have a look. All right, there's my heat gun. I'll reach over here and plug it in. If I don't pull the microphone off. Right, that's on. So watch the noise, sorry. Mind you, you need to be careful because it's plastic tape on the top, so you don't want to um, melt your tape. Mind you, could be a good look. Let's see how we go. If I put that over there, hopefully you're not too close to the microphone. And I want to see if I can dry that. If I go underneath, I might be able to dry it a little bit quicker. Without actually... It's warm, I'll give it that. Let's have a look. No, you're still not dry. No, you're going to have to wait until they dry. It's as simple as that. It's called being patient. I know I'm not known for my patience. This one was another one that we did, so he won't be dry either. He's a little bit dry. Oh, look. Different papers obviously dry quicker. Look at this. How's that? So, I'm going to get my... Oh, I'm not going to get a cloth. And I'm going to rub that because I want to rub a little bit of that white off. I like that. And let's give it a little bit of darkness. That's just my brushed corduroy. So it's what's left on my foam, which is not much, but just enough to tidy that down to the same color as my coffee dyed paper. See, I like that. That will work for me a treat. And normally I will do something, I'd decide to dry, go off, do some more tags for a journal or do some more pages in the signature or whatever else. So as I said before, we'll do a quick flip through today as well. How's that? Um, I just wanted something down here that gave me that mottled effect without actually having to stamp it. And I know a lot of you don't have stamps or you don't enjoy working with stamps or anything else. So this was another way, and let's face it, we've all got book pages. Now, some of the beautiful, beautiful um, flower book pages that I had, and I had lots. I've got a whole packet of them from different um, botanical books that I've gutted, things like that. I couldn't get a single one of those to work. They've obviously all got a coating of some sort on them. So unfortunately, they wouldn't work. As I said before, this one still needs its tags. So, but we've got its signature in now. I've got a couple of pockets here. Um, that's witchcraft you do digital. So you've seen me make some of these anyway. Now that they're all in, this is just half a doily. More little pockets. 
then I like this mottled look. So that's a stamp. But if you've got a book that this works with, you can get that same effect with these sorts of rub-ons, with your handmade rub-ons. This one's got a little dangle on there. I have to have some dangles. This one's a double pocket. There's the other one of those. Okay. One pocket in there, still waiting to be done. Journaling space. This one folds right out for lots of journaling space for the pocket in here. Lots of little pockets, tabs, etc. More pockets. The rest of that doily. Another pocket. Another pocket. You've seen me make this one on one of our tutorials one day as well, using our 6 by 6 paper pads. And that's got a journaling card inside it. That's a bit of serviette. Um, the, this was my new lot that I got. So this is vin actual vintage. And we've got another pocket here and it finishes the whole cover. It was a friendship book or something like that. And it was just a small size and I quite liked it. So I've just got all different bits of tissue paper. Um, some that I've bought, some like this from Witchcraft that I, that you do that comes through from when you purchase something with them and they pack it up and send it to you. It comes with this beautiful tissue paper. And I've just collaged both front and back with that. And there could be five or six layers in there. I've given it so many layers and white, and then I've sanded it all off and then sanded my edges and sanded my edges all in here just to give it that really loved look. So it was just a quick one today, that's what I said. Um, I don't know how quick, let's have a look. Oh, 21 minutes, we're doing well. How's that? But I just really want to show you all how to make your own... Um, what are I? Rub-ons. <laughs> but yeah, watch your books. Um, I haven't really come across many normal non-fiction or fiction books that haven't. So it's obviously a different ink type or whatever else. But yeah, let's have a look and see if this guy's dry yet. That I'd say he's not. You can still see that under there. No, he's not. You can see the glue moving. All right. So when I do up my photos, to put this on the front, you will see where they've been peeled off. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you go away and play with lots of your papers and make your own rub-ons. Get them ready. Have them sitting there so that you've got all these in a little pack. And then you can just glue them on when you're ready for what type of rub-on you want. That would work a treat. You've got them done. You've worked out your books already. You've got your, your tape on there. You've got your tape peeled off. And then you've got them all in a little container. Just ready. I haven't got any more here, have I? Just ready to then stick onto pages that you want. So that they're part done. And you've already got your packs of rub-ons. A little bit of patience. That's all you're going to need. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you get something out of it. And um, till next time. Happy crafting. Thanks, guys. Bye.